Jack. Uh, all packed? Yeah, ready to go when you are. Good. Oi, Jack. Yeah. Vanessa's in the office, and she's not very happy. No? Well, I just thought I got your card so you're prepared. Right. Thanks, Bill. Certainly looks well. Yes, yeah, she does, doesn't she? Very well. Life in the Mediterranean obviously agrees with her. Still, I wish she could make a life for herself here. Seeing her again made me realise how very much I miss her. We all miss her. But so long as she's well and happy, that's all that matters, isn't it? Yes, of course. Well, I'd better be going. Oh, uh, if Leo should get in touch, could you get him to phone me before he leaves? Darling, I know how you feel. Believe me, I do. But don't try to talk him out of going, will you? I can't promise that. Oh, come on, Jan. Leo's quite old enough to decide for himself what he wants to do, and so is Lynn. That doesn't stop me worrying about them, though, does it? A responsible parent doesn't worry about her children. Just keep a sense of perspective, that's all. Easier said than done. I manage it. At least I do sometimes. At least I think I do. <laughs> Bye, darling. <laughs> about that meeting at the bank, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. Thank you. And don't take no for an answer, then you'll be fine. I'll try not to. That's my girl. You're being totally unreasonable about unreasonable? it. Unreasonable? I shall be away for ten days at the most. Well, what happened if I want to go away at the same time? Who look after Thomas? But you won't be away, will you? So there's no problem. But that's the point, isn't it? I've got a career too, you know. So you keep telling me. There's nothing stopping you working full time if that's what you want to do. I mean, Gran's offered to look after Thomas. But you're his father. And you're his mother. No, we're responsible for looking after him. Don't mind my saying, I think you both ought to keep your voices down, otherwise he'll be awake. Oh, Again. thank you, Gerald. Well, I just thought that having been awake half the night, he, like the rest of us, could use some sleep. Oh, do you? Well, I don't think it's any of your business. All right, I don't want to interfere. You're not interfering. You apologise. What for? Your attitude! There's nothing wrong with my attitude! Care care of you. Why don't you discuss this rationally? Oh, I'm late enough for work as it is. I'm sorry about that. Well, it's... It's understandable in circumstances. Is it? <clears throat> yes, I mean, having a few sleepless nights, you're both bound to feel tired and irritable. Maybe it's lack of sleep. I think we're just oh, tired of each other. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, something's wrong. Oren, it's lovely to see you again. Good to see you too, Laura. Could you arrange some coffee for us, please, Sasha? You're looking well. Thank you. In fact, very well. Considering there have been some changes since I was last here. I assume you're not referring to the fact that I've had the place entirely redecorated. Uh, not exactly. <laughs> no matter where I look, there isn't a single trace of Ken Masters. Well, Ken decided it was time to move on. That was quite a maneuver, Laura. I bet Ken didn't know what hit him. <laughs> but he does now. And he won't forget you for a long time. I'm quite sure you didn't suggest this meeting just to talk about Ken. No. So, what did you want to discuss? All I am doing is bringing a boat back from the Mediterranean. What's wrong with that? You'll soon see if it starts falling apart when you sail it back. It won't fall apart. It's totally seaworthy. It's a classic boat. And you can't wait to get your hands on her, can you? Well, restoring her to a former glory is certainly going to be a challenge, if that's what you mean. Jack, I don't want you to go. How else am I supposed to bring her back? But, Jack, about that age, it's dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, but I do know my way round a boat. So did Tom. And Klaus. Yes. Well? well, it's a very impressive business plan, my dear. Very impressive. How much capital were you expecting to raise? Initially, 300000 to cover research and development costs. Mm -hmm. And then there's your marketing costs, of course. Oh, but they're minimal in comparison. Oh, I'm afraid I can't agree. No, you'd have to think in terms of a further 200000 at least before you got the subsidiary up and going. 
And that's a very substantial risk for the bank, my dear. Well, there is a market out there, John. If you can find it. It's unlikely to be so pessimistic. <laughs> a pessimist, my dear, is merely an optimist with experience. I've seen far too many new businesses fail through over-optimism. Yes, but we're not a new business, John. We've been trading for over five years. And our turnover nearly trebled last year alone. Yes, in the fashion world, certainly. But launching a cosmetic subsidiary is a very different matter. So you're not interested? <laughs> no, I was being pessimistic. I never said I wasn't interested. But, oh, well, to be honest with you, the only way that I can convince my board to accept your proposals is to launch this new business as a joint venture. And what exactly would that entail? Naturally, we'd have to put in our own man to oversee the operation. Oh, now, wait a minute. You would still have total control. The bank would only need a minority stake. How much of a minority would that be? Open to negotiation. Maybe as far as the bank's concerned. <laughs> Look, I'm not expecting an immediate decision. You take your time, think it over, but carefully. 